something like Diffie Hellman, right? Uh, you can you can do crypto just by taking like exponentiation. Sounds like such a simple operation. Uh, so, so exponentiation. So, so uh, the weird part about this: is there's a million different algorithms for exponentiation, a million, million different algorithms for multiplication, actually, and it, it turns out it's sort of the same algorithms. So, I, I kind of wanted to just rattle through them today because uh, it's it's something. It's surprisingly important. Uh, the, the implementations of these things uh, often, uh, as we've seen, end, end up uh, end up really breaking stuff. So, I got two numbers A and B. I want to multiply. How do I multiply them? Number A, number B. The obvious one, right, is A times B. This only works if the compiler knows how to multiply those numbers, right? So if your numbers are, say, 32 bits, 64 bits, this is great. If numbers are bigger than that, this doesn't work anymore, right? We just don't have, I mean, I always wanted to have, like, a really long integer or something, right? Or the very long int. <laughs> It's not short integer, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, long, long exists, but it's still only 64 bits on most 64 bit machines, so that doesn't help that much. It's, it's, it's yeah, not, not that far. So, so the deal is you have to, you have to break into this operation and do something. Uh, lots of people. So, so one advantage of doing this is it's probably going to get the right answer, unless you're multiplying. I don't know, a big number times another big number. Uh, let's see, that might not get the right answer. That might, let's see, may not, yeah, that's perfect. So, uh, let's see, more zeros, he said. So I'm going to make that a long constant and make that a long constant. Uh, see, also long. So two big long numbers, then you multiply them and you get, I'm not really sure what the product should be, but it shouldn't be negative. <laughs> and it probably shouldn't end in 44, <laughs> being that this is the product of two powers of 10. Yeah, uh, so we, we ran out of bits. This is the usual thing. This is actually the correct low order bits, I believe. It's just the correct low order 64 bits. So what we need is we need some algorithm that is going to, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start by multiplying smaller numbers. So if, if I want to multiply 10 times 10, how would I do that without using this uh, eightfold multiply? For loop. For loop? For loop, okay. So I'm going to have a product. Starts at zero, and the, so this is the really dumb implementation. So I'm going to have a counter. I guess it better be a long. So uh, counter starts at zero, goes to B, and I do product plus equal A. So there's my product. This should work fine for numbers that fit. I'm still stuck with this limitation. So I mean, so, so um, yeah. uh, I, uh, limitations. I need to know how to do multiplication. Or to, to do multiplication, I need to know how to do addition. Uh, if I want to make this exponentiation, well, you just replace the initial product at 1, and you do the multiply is now going to be multiplying by 10 each time. So now I have exponentiation. It's the same exact operation. Uh, there's one big downside to this. If I have n bit numbers, how long does this take? n would be linear time. The problem is, if B is like an n-bit number, like it's only a you know 100-bit long number. It's a value of 2 to the 100th. For loop takes 2 to the 100th time. So we have algorithms for doing multiplication. Best so far. This is our only one. It's 2 to the n for an n-bit number. Exponential time. That's the same length of time it takes to brute force an n-bit key. Which, I mean, the, the problem is, it, uh, I mean, it looks, looks fine, and this is, again, just multiplication. Uh, let's see, so start the product of zero, I'm adding. And, uh, I mean, if you just take these two small numbers that we saw before, so, I don't even know how many zeros I got, but probably enough. Yeah, apparently it's enough. You get two seconds on net run. And, I mean, you can, the uh, source code is really simple. Jump back to line A, right there. Add, compare, jump, add, compare, jump, add, compare, jump. So, so, so the problem is, I don't know how that loop could get any tighter. I mean, it's going to be like billions of iterations, so 10 billion iterations. It's going to take a while, right? It might take a nanosecond or something for iteration. That means this thing might run in like 10 seconds for a small number, but the thing is, this is only like 34 bits or something, right? 
And we're in crypto, we're going to want 200, 300 bit numbers, even for Diffie Hellman. To do something like RSA, you want like 1,000, 2,000 bit primes. So this is just totally infeasible. Uh, I personally find this exponential algorithm like shockingly bad. Like, I mean, if you're not in grade school, right, I can't imagine actually using this. Uh, if you are in grade school, you've actually reached fourth grade. Is this how they teach you how to do multiplication? Like, you remember from fourth grade that, like, they want you to multiply 76 times 63, and you had to do it 63 times. Now you no. know weird cherry thing that I never do anymore. <laughs> People have forgotten how to do this. So, uh, yeah. So, so there's this nice little table you can make. So whatever numbers I made up there, 78 times 63. Uh, multiply the low-order digits first, right? So I'm going to get a 24. So there's a four place. And then the two, unfortunately, I have to carry. So now seven, seven times three is 21, but I carry a two, so I end up with the 23. Right? So this is actually 78 times three. And now the trick is, uh, so I'm going to actually be multiplying 78 times six. Now six times eight is 48. And now I have to erase my carries, I guess. So I have to carry a four. Six times seven has been a long 14. time since. Uh, <laughs> let's see, 42 plus four is 46. So I have 468, which again is 60 times 78, and hopefully, and uh, 234, which is 3 times 78. And yeah, that's double that. So we're in good shape because that's double that. Uh, so, so, so now I have to add these partial products, right? Because it, it, essentially what I've just done is just factored 78 uh, times 63 is equal to 78 times 60 plus 3. Right? So I can so so these are powers of 10, which I can accomplish by shifting. So God, life is good. Is that that's that may or may not be visible at all <laughs> online. Sorry. <laughs> uh, hopefully you can follow along. So, so now I just have to add these partial products. So I have four, uh, three times eight. The plus, plus, plus is what I'm doing here. One. Here are the one. How long has it been since anyone has done this? I do it on calculus tests if I have to do it. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 You have to do it. So we end up with 4,914, which would have been a lot longer column if we had to do addition 63 times. And we probably would not have gotten the right answer. I don't know if we actually did get the right answer. So 78. So we can have a computer do 78 plus 63, repeat. So did we end up with, uh, I'm just curious, 4914. Wow, be dang. The first time. We can do more <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Fourth grade validated. Now. Yeah. <laughs> now we can move on. It's always, uh, it's always bizarre because when I do these in like my cup test, it takes the longest amount of time for any problem. Yeah. Like yeah. I'll do, <laughs> Derivatives are faster, integrals are faster. Doing this by hand always takes longer than I always was triple checking because I'm like, I got it. I can integrate no problem. But as, like, soon, as soon as math it, exited I numbers, I always screw it up. So. Yeah, like, like, well, the as soon as you move beyond numbers, math gets a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which is stick with letters. Yeah. I like it better. Yeah, it's surprising. So, how do we write a computer algorithm that does this? I mean, A, we have to pick a base. This was all base 10. Is base 10 going to be here? What uh, so so you you have to remember the multiplication table right like yeah. what is six times seven and that's kind of hard in decimal yeah. what's the multiplication table in base two? It's, like four by, it's a two by two matrix. Right? It's a two by two matrix. It's Three of the entries are zero. <laughs> <laughs> One of the entries isn't. <laughs> in binary that sort of narrows it down. We gotta worry about carrying. You do have to worry about there's some carrying so involved. There's still a lot of carrying involved. So so what is the equivalent algorithm in binary? So. I mean, so, so th this works for any base, right? That I, I get, uh, I get some some digits. So, so basically, I'm going to have digits A, B, C, and uh, E, F, G. So, so the trick is, I'm going to take this digit and multiply it by here to get this row. So there's the first row. This is just G times A, B, C, right? Uh, if G is one or zero, that just says whether this row is here or not. I'm going to shift over. I'm going to do F times this A, B, C. There's F. I'm going to do E times this row, right? There's ABC. Then I have to total all these things up. So all this is is this is like turn on the row or not. Right? That's binary multiplication. And then do bit shifting each time for the product. So this is not that hard, actually. So, so the, the, the term for this is peasant multiplication. <laughs> and they, apparently there's this, there, there's this algorithm that apparently even peasants could use to figure out whether the low order bit is set or not. How do you do that if you're a peasant? <laughs> Step one, write down the binary decomposition number. <laughs> no, it's not. Check remainder. Like mod? No, I never know exactly. Yeah. This is the Russian peasant 
right? Yeah. If, if the number is even, what is the value of the low bit? It's zero. Yeah. Uh, if it's odd, what is the value of the low bit? It's one. Yeah. So, so the trick is, uh, if it's even, you skip this row, right? You're multiplying by zero, and you and you move on, right? So, uh, so, so that then the the shifting they accomplished by just adding this number to itself, right? Add it to itself is like multiplying by two. Multiplying two is like left shifting by one bit. So it turns out you can do like literal exact peasant multiplication here, and it, it's it's uh, it's way way better. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to, gee, yeah, let's see, I'll just do this. I'm going to make it a while loop, I guess. So while B is still there, I'm going to say, let's see, if uh, the low bit of A is, or see, if the low bit of B is set, so I, I have to use a uh, bitwise operator. So low bit is set, I'm going to add in A, right? So A is included in product. Uh, include shifted A. Let's see, otherwise I don't include uh, else uh, skip uh, this product. And then I just need to shift A, so I'm just going to plus equal A. So shift, uh, shift up to A. I now need to shift down B, so B equals B over 2. You, right. So divide, divide by 2. Why wouldn't you use a bitwise operator? You could totally use a bitwise operator. Yeah. Why don't you shift uh, A equals A as a, as a shift? I'm curious about that. Um, yeah. I think it would. I, I, I add and shift are the same performance, so I, I don't know if it oh, matters. Okay. So eventually, hopefully, I'm going to right shift and B. I'm going to have no bits of B left, so B is going to be zero. So, so basically, I mean, the trick is we're we're just uh, we're working along here, and we're we're consuming the B. We're actually shifting A along, right? And that uh, hopefully is going to work out. So again, 78 times 63 should be 49, 19. Those are, I think, pretty random numbers. Hey, we get the same number. Now the real tip show looks like it works. That's cool. Uh, how's the performance? Probably going to overflow here, but uh, hopefully I'll get, uh, yeah, it's overflowed. But uh, hey, that we just returned. Performance seems to be better. How much better is the actual performance? What are the asymptotics of this thing? I mean, at each step, we lose a bit from B. If B has n bits, how fast is this? Okay. There's n iterations to the loop. Whoa. We just did way better. We just got like exponentially better. So we went from two to the n to n yeah, addition. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's pretty. If n is the number of bits. If n is the number of bits. Yeah. Yeah. This is n squared. Well, yeah. You know the the, the other issue here. Uh, how uh, it's it's uh, it's order n additions which is. How fast are these for n bit numbers? I mean, they're they're all really basic operations, right? So they're super fast. Well, yeah. I mean, if uh, unfortunately, if I have a long, yeah. then yeah, adding is constant time. Bulk one is constant time too. Uh, actually, any operation you do on a constant size. Value you can just look up in a table, so it's all constant time, asymptotically. Yeah, uh, but, but the trick is like uh, for crypto, we really need big numbers, right? Like you know, I mean, you could in theory just have a big multiplication table takes your 256-bit number as a row and 256-bit number as a column and looks up the answer. But there's like two to the 512 entries, which is more than particles in the universe or something. So <laughs> tough to actually store that uh, that kind of thing. <clears throat> so so we need an algorithm to calculate this stuff. So so the algorithm. Uh, what would be the algorithm to addition on long numbers? We we just did it. Well, you take one digit, right, and you add it to the corresponding digit. That's just a lookup table, right? And then maybe you get a carry or something. So again, there's some just modifying the constant factors. But the thing is, there's only n bits here, right, or n digits. So n, adding n digit numbers is probably n digit operations. So this is actually n squared. It's because there's n iterations of this loop, and there's n uh, to do the distribution. So, right. Uh, okay. Uh, so, so this is this is the the peasant multiplication or the binary multiplication. Uh, if you look at the timing, the timing is actually not that good on this algorithm. So the, the big the big problem with the timing. Uh, let's see. Stare at the disassembly. Ah, uh, right there we are. 
there's there's a conditional move, right? So so we, we have to test like the low bit, do a bitwise and, then we do a conditional move. So so the trick is all of this stuff, <clears throat> right? And the, the rest of it's just a loop. I mean, it's a single instruction, right? Right shift, do a condition, simple cheap stuff. But uh, but but the, the conditional move, and it, it turns out the conditional move ends up being like uh, there's the branch predictors involved there, and it. Uh, yeah, but modern machines do not like branching if statements are, are bad. Is there any obvious way we could get rid of a branch? The other problem with if statement, uh, you take the if statement, it takes you an extra fraction of a second to do it. What this means is the time for you to do a multiplication tells an attacker how many bits are one. Mm -hmm. Which is really scary because you're probably multiplying like, you know, your secret key. <laughs> you could multiply by instead of doing if b and 1, uh, product plus equal a, do product plus equal a times parentheses b and 1. Hmm. I'm with you right up to the times. Oh, right, because we don't <laughs> have times. Damn it. What's a way of doing time? I mean, basically, we just want to be able to like turn off a if and b. And yeah, yeah. So, so we could do a bitwise operator. So, so here, here's the deal. Uh, let's see. I, I want to have a, a bitwise mask, and it's going to be some variant of this. Like, I'm going to put question marks there. Uh, that's not syntax, but uh, and then I want to do let's see, uh, basically a bitwise and mask. So, so uh, if b bitwise and one is true, then I want to have the mask be all one bits. And if a bitwise and the mask is false, I want to have all zero bits in there. So now, yeah. So, so a bitwise and zero is going to be zero. We're going to be adding up the product. So that's good. Uh, so yeah, and then a bitwise and uh, uh, with all ones. Now the problem is this isn't all ones. There's only one one. This is one or zero. What we want is all ones or zero. Does anybody know of a cool trick for this? You get four at the ones and then a zero. I could I could figure out if the bits are there. I, it, it turns out there's a million different ways to do this. Exploring it with itself always gives you zero. Yeah. Yeah. There's a million. Actually, in my previous incarnation of lecture notes, I basically took this low bit, I shifted it up to the sign place, and then right shifted with sign extension. So it's kind of a funky. Way to do this. You have to know where the so, so the, 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 there's this, the, all these rules on bit shift. Like if I if I have a sign number and it's negative, I right shift and like to replicate the sign bit. So I have I have to convert to sign value. Uh, the, 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 and then uh, I, I was looking for something completely different, and I found this. What does that do? So if so if b bitwise and zero, if the bitwise and one is zero. In other words, it's odd. I take the negative zero, it's zero. That's all zeros. No problem. Yeah. So if there's a one that comes out of this, what's negative one in binary? One, 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 one. It's all ones. It's all ones because if I add one, then it rolls over to all zeros. So it gets cool, funky trick. I wonder what the compiler does for that. I think there might be a negate instruction. You can you can do that with XOR. There is some cool trick with XOR. Uh, you flip all the bits and add one. That's it. That's negate. Anyway, uh, so so uh, so we so we should try this and then I don't know what that is, but uh, hopefully it's the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Same thing. So we got the same the same result. And then if you look at the uh, look at the code. Oh, there's a negate operation on x86 has instructions for everything. So now, so so we're we're actually quite good here. Right? So here, here's the inner loop of our assembly code that is basically just you know arithmetic. And, and the cool part about this arithmetic is it's the same arithmetic no matter what the data is. There are no data dependent branches, which means there's no problem with the branch predictor. That means there's no uh, there's no side channel attack on timing, right? So we're actually we're we're much better off. Uh, right. So what's the problem with if statements exactly? Yeah, uh, it's it's a performance thing. If it, I I get all the performance data. So if you if you look at the performance of uh, multiplication with binary. <laughs> So we, we just do a if this thing is set, then, then we do this. Then it's like if I'm multiplying by 100,000, it takes 25 nanoseconds. If I do the AND trick, it's 16 nanoseconds. It's actually like a 
50% speed up if you count it one way. <laughs> <laughs> you spent in the thing. Well, That's yeah. Too hard. I, I don't know. It's uh, this is actually always like the discounts. Like if they say 100% off, do they mean it's free, or do they mean it costs like you know the, the if you double the old cost, you get the new cost. <laughs> you double the new cost, you get the old cost. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's so, so basically, I mean, you go from. Uh, to 25 to like 16. Well, technically 17. But. Yeah, so, so if, yeah, you, you know, you're probably right. 50% speed up would be 12.5 nanoseconds. We're definitely not there. So, yeah, double 30% speed up or whatever, whatever that is. It's the speed up. So, so the, the, the reason for the speed up is because modern CPUs are doing branch prediction. If you took my CS441, you've probably heard more about this than you ever care to. For me, too. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, so that's a surprising thing. And then the, the, the other trick here is that the uh, the actual performance of this thing is a function of how often it took the branch. So you're actually you're, so your timing information is going to be leaking information about what your secret key is, which is really bad. And and there, there, there's been a series of uh, you know results that show that that's that's really bad. Uh, are there any other to, so so the timing channel should hopefully be more or less eliminated here because it's I mean there there is no conditional anything. There's no conditional execution whatsoever. Are, it, it, uh, have we totally plugged the side channel? It, usually, usually the side channel stuff is like conditional something something, conditional uh, uh, cache access. We're not touching the cache. And if we were, we would be touching it in exactly the same way time along. Uh, the other side channels, people see uh, uh, side channel like uh, radio frequency stuff. Like the CPU is emitting, you know, energy because the you know the wires are going up and down at some time, and that's conceivably in there. Uh, power is another surprising uh, timing channel attack. In theory, somebody could uh, they could just watch the, uh, the watch the plume coming off of the heat sink on your data center from space or something, and by you know carefully sending you data and then timing the you know the, the temperature changes of the plume, they could in theory work out more or less anything. That's a really low precision way to do it. Uh, you can get a really high precision way to do it if you end up on the same AWS server and you're constantly asking the CPU how warm are you for all of your cores, then you could you can actually get very, uh, I mean, appallingly precise stuff. They have like you know, milli uh, milli degree accurate uh, thermistors on there, some of them, and uh, and, and they can they, they, they can get very sensitive uh, measurements of these things. So, so uh, power attack. What do you think? I mean, uh, this AND instruction is either going to be ANDing zeros, in which case it might actually use less power than it's ANDing ones and zeros. Conceivable. Uh, pretty unlikely, I think. That, so, yeah, uh, hard to hard to totally conceal everything you're doing. So, yeah, so, so we have uh, so multiplication peasant algorithm with or without uh, some sort of modification. Uh, I should have said the original peasant algorithm. Right, we we could turn uh, we could turn this thing into exponentiation really easily by just doing this. Right. So so that's uh, so that's great. And then if I want to take I don't know ten to the ninth power, there's only one problem with this, which is I get zero. This actually worked with the original if statement. Sure, I should. Uh, so if b and one take the product. So th this this was fine. We get a billion. So hmm, that's operational, but uh, a and mask fails. Gives me a zero. Because if you get a zero once, you don't want to multiply it by zero. Period. You only want to multiply. It by zero. Visualize and with the mask. The whole mask's whole job is to zero out contributions from stuff that uh, you know, is not supposed to be in the product. But the problem is zero. Zero is not a no-op for multiplication, like it is for addition. What we want is we want the multiplicative identity, which is one. one. Yeah. Do you need to XOR that with one? Oh my, same I yeah, uh, let's see, some, something like that. Uh, X, XOR one is going to give me a one in the case where I would have, I would have gotten a zero. So should be non-zero, which is great. It's not one billion anymore. 
Yeah. It's got all these excess ones in it. <laughs> it's like somebody XORed our values with one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so this is, you know, the, the, the paradox here is we only want to do this if mask is zero. But well, we don't want to branch. Well, we can't do the branch. Well, we know how to do stuff if mask is one or if mask is zero, right? Yeah. That we would do the same exact trick that I'm going to do a uh, bitwise and with the mask. Now, the problem is because the, if the mask is zero, that's the only time I want this to be there. So I need to do some another another flip here. So bitwise negate. Yeah, or or, or XOR. Yeah, those are either one. Totally good. You can even use a plus there. So, so the idea here: if mask is zero, this part's gone, and I want to have a one. So let's see, not zero is going to be one, and then the one will come through. So I'll be multiplying by one, hopefully. Does that make any sense? Why? Why do you need the one and not mask? Can you just use not mask? Not, not mask, unfortunately, is uh, it's all ones. I wonder if this might be faster if I could just put in like B bitwise and one. Re reconstruct this original one or zero thing. But I, I would still need to flip the sense of it. Yeah, so, so I think the one and not mask, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Happens to give the right answer. I think it performs relatively okay. So so we, we just we just made an exponentiation algorithm. Now, the, there's something weird about this exponentiation algorithm because it, this is not a, like a big shit anymore. Right? This is like squaring. In other words, if, if you want to compute, uh, you know, you, you've got a value, you want to compute its eighth power. The naive way to do it is to, like, compute its first power, that's the number. Multiply by itself, you get the second power. Multiply itself again, you get the third power. Multiply itself, the fourth power, right? You do this eight times. But once you hit the second power, you can just, right, now, so I have the number squared. I can multiply the number squared by itself and get the number to the fourth. I can multiply the number by to the fourth by itself, and I get the number to the eighth, so I can skip over all the ones in between. Good. That, that's what this is doing. Is it too warm in here? It's like really warm, but that's it. Question. This is kind of insane looking code. You're, you're probably okay if you just say, if it's a zero, replace A with one. Concerned about side channel. If you're not concerned about side channel, just don't, don't worry about it. So again, there's, uh, there's some multiplies, but it's the same deal. There's no, there's no data dependent anything happening in there, which is good. Uh, let's see, I, I think uh, or, or, or works, or XOR works, bitwise OR works. You can be, one or the other of these guys are going to be zero. So you can combine them and dang near any way you want, and you're going to get the same answer. Surprising. I think I've, I've done this trick like every year in assembly, computer architecture. So it seems like the most natural thing in the world to me now. <laughs> but that's just me. <clears throat> so, so again, if I'm doing exponentiation, I have to be able to do multiplication. I have to do multiplication faster. There's some way to do fast multiplication. Uh, <clears throat> interesting question. Is this as good as it gets? Oh, yeah, well, we already had an exponential speed up there. Is it plausible someone is going to give you an algorithm tip to uh, it's, it's uh, order n as to do binary multiplication? And then again, if it's if it's multi precision, right? It's probably order n squared operations because those adds are you, know, you have to make them. Can you do better yet? 
I mean, order n is usually about as good as it gets. If you have to look at the data, you're pretty much stuck with order n. Uh, and the square is usually not the not as good as it gets. I seem to remember uh, algorithms had one that was in gamma again. Can't remember. So so there's actually two of them. There's a really beautiful one, actually, which is divide and conquer algorithm. So, so this is yeah. Karat Suba, and in undergrad, I was listening to a lecture where somebody says, like, yeah, n squared is probably the bound. And he's like, I don't think it is. And then a week later, he took it back to his professor, like, see, it's not. You can do it faster. And the professor's like, awesome. Writes a paper. <laughs> <laughs> Puts a student's name on it, at least. <laughs> uh, so so if, if I've got a number, so here's my x. It's got a low half and a high half. So this is the basic multi-precision operation, right? I have some base, like 2 to the 32nd. So I got like a low int and a high int, 2 to the 64th, and a low long and a high long. And, and, and you can recursively do this. So I've got a number divided up in two halves, right? So I've got x and y. Uh, i got so y1 times the base plus y0. So I want x times y. How do I do that in terms of these numbers? Well, you, you can you can expand this thing out, right? You get uh, x1, y1 times the base squared. You're going to have, uh, right, it's, it's just parenthesize these things, multiply them together. Uh, x1, y0, x1, y0, x0, y1, those are both uh, times the base. Uh, and then we have uh, x0, y0. I don't think anyone in the room can see that. I have it on the lecture notes somewhere. Let's see. Okay, Karatsuba. It's beautiful. You're essentially trying to do that, right? That's sort of naive, like just take it and you know, hammer through. What you start by doing uh, with Karatsuba is you take the high order and the low order and you subtract them. Why? That's, that was the genius of Karatsupa. <laughs> uh, well, you, you do this because what I'm, I, if I foil these guys out, well, I'm going to get x1 times y1. That's actually wasted, right? I already have that here. Now I have an extra one. I'm going to cancel out. I have, uh, let's see, x0 times y0. Oh, shoot, I already have that. So now I've got to cancel that out. Well, this has been a total waste so far. And then I have these cross terms. I've got x1 times y0. Uh -huh. And I get uh, x0 times y1. And I did that in one multiply. So naively, right, uh, if, if you just do this, you get uh, you, you get four sub-multiplies. Right? You, you, know, you take the, the high order halves, the low order halves, the low times the high, the high times the low. Well, four, four products, right? So if, if you solve the recurrence relation, right, if I divide it up into four pieces, and they're half the length, that's n squared. If I can divide them into three pieces are half the length, I'm below n, or I'm below n squared. I'm actually at n to the log 3, which is like n to the 1.5 something. And, and the trick is I just I, I, I do some subtraction beforehand. I end up with this extra crap that I have to cancel out of there. Right? That's what these things are doing. <laughs> and uh, bam, I'm I'm done, right? So, 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 so the, uh, the the GNU multi precision arithmetic people actually have a really nice write up of exactly when this is beneficial. I mean, you do you do more ads, right? And and uh, I mean, it, it's a question of how fast are these things. Well, if, if you're if you're breaking like your it, we're, uh, one level down is 32 bit numbers, for example. This is not a net win because like multiplying 32 bit numbers is basically instantaneous. Adding is basically instantaneous. But like if you get more ads, then you get then you save and multiplies, and, and there's like way more, right? I'm going to get that extra add, that extra add, uh, let's see, these two extra subtracts, and then it's just there's a lot more happening there. Uh, and then i get, I got to negate this whole thing, too. Uh, there, there's absolutely more work, except uh, 
So, so it, it's actually a net loss for three stupid numbers, right? So this doesn't really start making sense until you're at like 300, 400, 500 bits. But above that, it starts to right, like win, and it starts to really win, at, as is the deal with asymptotics, right? So higher constant, lower uh, lower exponent, so that's totally great. Uh, same deal for the schrodinger strassen algorithm. Uh, it gets you down to n log n log log n, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> so it's still worse than you got to look at the data. That's uh, that's cool. It uses a Fourier transform in in, in there, but uh, sixty four thousand bit numbers is about the only place it starts actually having any benefit. <laughs> yeah. So so that's it's really that's a thing. Yet. <laughs> it's not there yet. Yeah. Actually, I don't I don't know. If that's that's a huge key. That's a, that's an insane key. That is an insane key, yeah. I mean, like, like a 4,000, 8,000 bit key is pretty pushing it. Like, it's it's much more likely the algorithm is wrong and there's some really simple way to, to solve this thing. It's, yeah. Uh, so so I, I, I don't know if we're ever going to get there for this particular thing. It's, it's actually quite possible that, like, the big primes deal is just going to blow over. <laughs> Quantum computers, for example, would mean that, like, eh, we just can't really do anything with big primes. We're going to need... Quantum resistant uh, operations have to destroy data. So, uh, yeah. so, so, so questions about this. So, so this is actually really important, but it's uh, it's probably not so important for stuff like uh, elliptic curves, where you're talking about maybe 256 bit, 500, 512 bit numbers. You can probably you know take or leave uh, Karatsu, but but if you're talking about RSA, it actually is uh, it's a performance win, definite performance win. And, and and there's you notice there's no if statements or side channels or anything here. It's just algebra. And it's actually kind of amazing because 1960, as far as anyone can tell, that somebody figured out that, like, hey, you can recursively divide this thing into smaller pieces. So, yeah, so surprising. Questions? So, uh, let's see, uh, obvious analog, Karatsuba exponentiation. How do we do the subtract? I don't know, but I'm hoping there's going to be the one of you guys technique. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be happy to write the paper. I'll put your name on it and everything. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so gracious. <laughs> it's a win win. <laughs> I'm sure there's magic. I'm sure if I ask, you know, I'm sure there's some oracle you can define. That is a constant. Right. The exponential table, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the trick is you can, it, so, so the, the table is great for any table you can fit. Yeah. And once you get bigger than the tables you can fit, then you have to do something. <laughs> you have to have an algorithm to actually compute it, so. Yeah. Well, I don't know, it might even be fat ball. Yeah. For, for pre-computation, though, is a, that's definitely a thing. And I, I was really surprised. I was timing my elliptic curve stuff against some other you know, folks' implementation of this. And, uh, like, if I want to compute uh, uh, 256 bits, uh, you know, uh, I, I want to do exponential 256 bits on, on this curve, then basically, like, you know, there was, this was like 10,000 times faster than mine. I'm thinking, holy cow. <laughs> I suck, <laughs> and and I am like I gotta look at this implementation. I look at the implementation, and it's like it's just these numbers. <laughs> I'm like, well, what the heck is that? That's uh, that's basically all the five, all the two fifty six powers, right? From you know one out out there. So all they do, like to do the the exponentiation, they just say like, yep, those done. <laughs> right. They don't actually have to compute the bits. So, so, so the trick is they're not computing two to the 256 entries, right? That'd be insane. They're computing 256 entries that are each of the powers of two. So they have to combine up to, you know, the, on average they combine 100 of them and they're done, right? So they essentially just didn't do the add and not the multiply, which is really slow. Uh, Look to curve. So, yeah, you can, you can absolutely cheat. There are many ways to cheat on these things. And that's, uh, in engineering... That's that's the name of the game, <laughs> right? So, uh, so the, the it, it, as as far as the performance of these things, so on small numbers, oh shoot, I didn't close it, did I? Uh, four, six, three.
So you, you, can, you can try each of these things, right? Multiplication or exponentiation. And you can just do your benchmarking and figure out uh, how, how fast are these things. So like, you know, we have to uh, do, take, take the product. And uh, the, the basic deal, it, it's pretty much exactly what you would expect. Uh, well, that, that's the exponentiation. So exponentiation gets exponentially slow with a uh, uh, right the, the slow the slow method. It turns out it's not so, so this bitwise and technique is not a huge savings for exponentiation. Um, I suspect you're probably waiting more for the multiplies than you would be waiting for the uh, the, the timing. So let's see. I, I can I guess I can crank this number up and it's going to be overflowing every time around. Maybe kind of embarrassing. Uh, let's see. So yeah, uh, I mean, exponential is slowing down exponentially. I mean, but this is multiplying a number like a thousand. That's ten bits. Yeah. I mean, we usually multiply numbers that are like the tenth power of this, which is ten times slower if you're essentially you know linear in the number of bits, and it's to the tenth power slower if you're you know, linear in the value of the bits. So. Uh, yeah, so, so do, don't do not do this. There are so many people that do this. It, uh, this this algorithm, I, I was kind of. I, it'd be nice if I could find a way to actually just grab for all of the occurrences on the internet and then just send out a mass email, basically saying like, "What are you people doing?" I, I was actually thinking about using this particular implementation, and this is this started life as somebody's uh, course project or something. But he's computing. Here's here's the power. Yeah, just loop from zero to the exponent and do a multiply. Right, very simple. Uh, he clearly knows about this technique of like looking at the bits and, and doing doing thing. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that was just a uh, right, so look to see if it's uh, let's see if it's odd. If the bit is set, we do a multiply. That's kind of side channel attacky, but uh, and multiply and uh, right, uh, multiply shift up the one and shift down the other. Simple uh, simple implementations. So yeah, uh, I mean, lots of people have have actually used that algorithm. I've uh, I'm amazed by the number of big integer libraries that use that algorithm for simple stuff like multiplication. <laughs> so it's em embarrassing. Don't do that, please. Use use a, a reasonable uh, uh, algorithm for this stuff. So I mean, the, the binary algorithm is not that much harder, and it's exactly the same algorithm for multiplication or ex exponentiation. I guess it's it's the same algorithm for whatever the the next logical thing is. I mean, if I repeatedly do this and I'm taking exponentials. Each time, a to the a power, the numbers start getting really huge, really fast. I mean, you can you can just repeat this as many times as you want. Right? So, uh, any questions about this? The big limiting factor at this point. Uh, we we have to fit in 64 bits if we're using 64 bit numbers. The product quickly, I mean, the, the A is quickly and the product to quickly get bigger than that. They don't fit anymore. For crypto, this is often not actually a problem in practice. Because I'm often doing modular exponentiation, right? So, so right for, for Diffie-Hellman, turns out for RSA, for uh, elliptic curve, what I want is that I want to basically compute some big value, but I want to compute it all modulo a big prime. So uh, asymptotics work out basically exactly the same. The operations work out exactly the same, except you get this one nice little feature, uh, which is that uh, uh, mod a prime distributes over uh, all the operations that we want. So uh, a plus b mod a prime. Is this equal to a mod a prime plus b mod a prime? Yes. No, actually. <laughs> that would be handy. Right. Uh, uh, so odd number plus even number mod 2, right, mod 2 being the odd even business. Uh, it, it is absolutely the case that some, some sort of essence of oddness evenness is preserved, right? If I have even plus even, I'm going to get an even answer, right? I, I know. Uh, but, but here's the problem. If I have an odd number, I have a 1 coming out of here, and I have an odd number, I have a 1 coming out of here. The answer is 2. It would have been 0 if I would have added them and taken the oh, graph yeah. ground. So the only way to actually make so, so it's... There's some sort of analog of distributed. So, so if it was really distributed over addition, then it would just be uh, plus is, is plus. We have to have this 
the final mod at the end. Now, this is actually awesome. What this means is that you can mod P or not, and uh, it's uh, it's actually going to be the same the same answer. So, so if if you want to mod P, sure, mod P. Numbers are getting kind of big. You haven't mod P. You always mod P before you return. Go for it, sure. You're going to get the same answer as if you had not, right? So that's that's great. Uh, and uh, let's see. So the other question: Do we distribute over multiplication? Yes. And it turns out the answer is yes. Why is the answer yes? Multiplying something by something else that is divisible by the thing you're modifying. That make any sense at all. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> There's some clever explanation for that. I just don't know what that answer is. You <laughs> proof. I'm sure it's an abstract. I should be doing more proofs in this class. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll look up the gory details in this thing. Uh, so, so the, the nice part about modu modulus in a prime, right? So, so they call this in a prime field because this works. Right. Uh, and, and what this means is that uh, I can actually do sort of normal, non-mod arithmetic as, as long as I don't overflow. What, one big problem, if this overflows, I've essentially taken a mod a big power of 2, which is usually not 1 in the prime field. And uh, then, then you're in big trouble, actually, because you're not, you're not going to get the same answer. So, uh, so, so, so this, is the, uh, this is our sort of unintended consequence. So we've got all right. It keeps bringing up the same. I don't know how to work in Firefox. <laughs> so, uh, what do I need here? I want to return a value. Uh, can I work in Firefox? So, I, I, I get. Uh, I have some questions to answer. If I've got a prime, so here's my prime, and it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's probably not a prime, because <laughs> it ends in five. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's probably a prime around there somewhere. Uh, I should do one that we actually know is prime, like five or oh, nine. So, I, uh, so if, uh, if I calculate A and B, we should be able to experimentally verify all of these things if they're actually true for all numbers. B is five, six. So I've got uh, a plus b mod the prime. This is not the intelligent way to go about this, I suppose. Uh, it turns out to be 70. A mod the prime, well, they're both mod the prime already. So I'm going to uh, uh, pick a different number. OK, so, so the question is, do if I take b mod the prime first, yeah, of course it's 52. Uh, what's the difference between b mod p there and uh, just b? Well, I've subtracted off a certain numbers of copies of the prime. Right? Mm -hmm. That's how I got down to the mod round value there. I had to subtract off two copies of the prime, I guess. Uh, subtracting off two copies of the prime, mod a prime, what is that going to do? Nothing. So this is this is why we can make mod a prime. Uh, and and uh, so so same deal with multiplication. And and this starts to look a little bit hinky, right? Like uh, a times b is some sort of scarily big number. Mod of prime is apparently 429. I would not have predicted that. But, uh, so take this thing, mod of prime, still 429. Why? Well, it's the same exact rationale. The way we get from B to B mod P is we subtracted off a certain number of copies of the prime. Mm -hmm. We then took those back to the copies of the prime and multiplied them by A. But it doesn't matter because they were copies of the prime. So anything we do with the prime is just totally meaningless so, uh, in, inside this field. So, uh, right, so I can take this thing and I can add as many copies of the prime as I want, and that doesn't, that's not going to change the answer, still 429, because it's all mod the prime. Can you mod a both A? I can do mod of A, mod of B, yep. so I can, I can just start shoveling in mods all over the place. So wh why do you care? Well, uh, if I have a loop somewhere, and the loop is actually summing up values, right, however I'm doing it, when do I mod? Whenever you think it will ever get bigger. If you ever think that it might be beneficial, feel free to mod all you want. Yeah, <laughs> we'll make more. 
Uh, so, so this is uh, so this is kind of surprising. It didn't did it not make a new town? Oh, maybe that makes a new tab. I'm mystified by these web browsers. That's uh, <laughs> new things. Yeah, I don't I don't understand what what we got here. So I've got uh, so I, I got my performance comparisons. Okay, performance comparison. There we are. I've got lots of different ways of doing exponentiation. So like this slow exponentiation, right? Uh, so I'm going to be taking products. So here's the x slow mod. So it's going to be all mod of big prime. So when do I put in the prime? Well, whenever I want, right? So I could just uh, calculate this big thing and then return the product mod prime. That would be totally fine. Uh, how big is the product going to get? Bigger. I mean, if you need to mod it. So, so imagine, right, uh, A and B are like two and six bit numbers, some reasonable small thing. Right? Uh, so, I'm. It, it, that's a two and six bit number times two and six bit number. That's a five twelve bit number for the first one. And I'm tacking on two and six bits every time I do this. At the end, it's two and six bit times two and six bits. It's this enormous thing. And then I do wrap it all around back mod, you know, two and six bit number. That's appallingly inefficient. Right, and uh, well, th this algorithm is appallingly inefficient anyway. But uh, so, I'm, so what I should really do is I should do I should do just uh, product times a mod p, and uh, I mean maybe you can get away with doing a couple multiplies. I don't have to time this. I haven't timed this. It depends on how fast your multiply and divide are. Uh, so, so basically, so you you can just incrementally be doing products and heck take a mod at the end just for. General principles. I mean, that's uh, that's totally fine. I'm not even printing any values or anything. Uh, so, 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 so the trick is that this is this is the same result. Hopefully, we should so we should be able to compare these two guys. So I'm going to do an explode and explode mod. So return the return the values. So I got uh, bunches of stuff commented out here. Awesome. So I got uh, long A is one two three four. B is uh, I'd better be fairly small, five, six, seven. I'm going to take uh, she out. I'm going to have uh, A times B mod P. I'd better have a prime. Prime. I should remember. I should memorize some bigger primes. This is uh, that would make this more exciting. Uh, so I'm going to do a slow exponential between A and B, and then take the whole thing mod P. I'm going to compare that to doing the uh, doing the mod as we go. So so one one big mod at the end. Wow. I don't know how to notate that. Sure. So there we are. X So if we compare the two values, right? Uh, hopefully. Oh. We didn't get the same value. Oh no, math is broken. Uh, <laughs> usually, it's not the math that's broken. Uh, well, what happens if I take one, two, three, four to the five, six, seventh power? It's a huge number. <laughs> it's way bigger than I can fit in a long. What if I have to take it to the second power? Maybe the third power I can fit. So I think and the cube is going to be only a few billion. So yeah, so I get five in both cases. So okay. We, we survived that one, uh, right? So, 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 yeah. Really, don't want to overflow. You can't overflow. And and uh, so, if you use, if, if I'd written the same thing in Python, it wouldn't have overflowed, right? It just would have been a performance issue, right? So this is. Uh, uh, so, so this trick: just take mods all over the place. I, I, so I'll have to time this and actually see for my implementation, which is the only one in the big in library that I really know in detail. Uh, I, I think my uh, so for, for multiplication, I actually don't do even carrot super. So it's to, but but I do take like 32 bit number times 32 bit number gives me a 64 bit product, and then pull pull the, the pieces out of that. So it's it's relatively okay. For uh, for divide, there's a Newth gives an algorithm for this, and I fought this for like a day and then gave up. Uh, at some some point, I need to figure out how to do that. I, I was I was trying to fix the side channel vulnerabilities too, which is uh, 19 1960. Newth didn't worry about that. Uh, 
so yeah, so so my my mod or my, my divide is actually a binary divide. Essentially, it says like uh, I, I want the next bit of the quotient. I try and fit it in. Can I fit? If so, you subtract that off and uh, and work your way down. So I suspect my my divide is really quite slow. Uh, you have to do divide to figure out the modulus. Yeah. There's uh, oh uh, so, so so we saw wrap around totally killed us right I mean we got absolutely the wrong answer if uh, if, if this thing overflows then we're just in, in huge trouble we're not going to get the right answer it turns out there's a uh, the Montgomery reduction it's called you can you can take the prime and a power of two and change a and b so that then you can wrap them around in the power of two. And then convert back to uh, mod the prime and still get the same the same numbers in the Montgomery reduction. And I, I need to actually try those. In Wikipedia, it sounds really promising, <laughs> but that's so basically good. all I know. Yeah. So, so we, I guess we saw and we saw we saw last time the. Uh, did I show you these plots? I did show these plots. I think. Yeah, like, sure. If if we do if if we chart like uh, number A times number B mod a big prime, that, 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 these are surprising to me. This is the table of exponentials for mod 509. And 509 is not a large prime by any means, right? So, so the, the, there's the table of exponentials. That's the multiplication table, which is change the size on me. So the multiplication table has a lot of structure to it. But, uh, that, that corner is near zero, as you might expect. Gets bigger and bigger, wraps around, etc. But the exponential table is pretty much just gibberish, uh, and it's the same deal. Window sizes, come on. So five, so the, the, that's that's the 509 case, and uh, let's see if I do the same thing mod 510, then I get uh, let's see. So there's 509, looks good. Exponential table, multiplication table, and uh, that's the exponential table for mod 510, which is just tor horribly broken. And there's lots of ways to reach zero. You're actually always hitting zero again and again and again through here. Every time you have like a multiple of five or ten, right? It'll scale out, and then it'll be a multiple of Five hundred ten. So, uh, yeah, some, some, some bad news. L lots of patterns. Uh, pretty much useless for crypto. This kind of thing. Uh, probably useful in some other field. But yeah. So, so it, it turns out prime fields. There's something special about the prime part. Uh, you can you can in fact build. Yeah. So for, for finite field theory. So, so the, 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 there's a whole lot of whole lot of mathematics. I'm gonna have to do more work on the mathematics. I'm always. The, the computer architecture, high performance stuff, totally down with that. The math I've not really looked at for, since I got my math degree here 15 years ago. So, yeah. So, so that, that'll be fun. That'll be interesting. Probably change the math. Do so don't worry yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> Probably all different. Completely different. Math changes so fast. It's yeah, just, no, uh, you learn one thing, the next day it's just what's the point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so more of that on Wednesday. Uh, also on Wednesday, uh, project topics. Uh, actually, what I'm hoping is uh, you just come to class and you say your project topic, and then we. <laughs> it's a very technical. Uh, it's very technical. Yeah. <laughs> so no, no submission needed, which is nice. Okay. Yeah. That's less work for everybody. Uh, see, there's no homework in this class. That's a bug. Sorry. I will hope to fix that. It. Uh, I guess it can't be due Friday now. Sorry. You should be focusing on the projects. Oh, that would be a good idea. Yeah. Where this guy yeah. From? Also, yeah, well, unfortunately, then, then I'm like, uh, well, yeah, you know, are you timing the exponentiation or are you like, just the time? Like, this is a book over here. <laughs> Well, it's just like oh, math like, equals negative. Yeah, oh, like, there's some stuff right mean. there. Uh, I figured if this is equal to. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't, and you don't I need think that. Right no, you, ah. no, no, you still, you still need that. And this. I was I was, <laughs> I was surprised. So. What's this? Oh, yeah. Uh, the on, on the on the mask. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. 
Yeah, one and not nine. Yeah, I don't think that. I think it's going to one and each. No, no you, you're probably right. We, we need you, you, get zero. you get a zero. You get a zero when you yeah. do that. So you, you, you need you need your end. I tried like every uh, combination. Not? <laughs> I yeah, this is this is exactly. <laughs> Okay. You're just like, you, are you just like you adding characters and seeing what's gonna happen? <laughs> just, yeah, it's a fuzzer coder, basically. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what? It does. Looks like just do a knot. Just do. Just yeah. do. Just use that. Just use that. <laughs> that seems to. Yeah. One, one number. It works. I don't know if it works for all numbers. So. Yeah. Uh, probably, probably does. It's a bit like stuff. Yeah. The proof writing in the mods for the multiply is pretty. I was just doodling it. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. nothing bad. Yeah. You do? Good yeah, job. You, you, you get extra copies of people. It's just like, it's yeah, like, like you have yeah, A yeah, equals so like N, P plus X. Yeah. yeah. So you multiply oh, that's, like, that's a prime, right? And if you so have, if like, you mod P, it's gone. Yeah. Then if you boil it out, you just get a bunch of things with P and then X times Y at the end. Yeah, why didn't I think to look at it? I didn't think it would get this far, actually. So. Yeah, if you think it multiplies, it's a really complicated topic. I felt like it was. Okay. Let's see. Can't, we don't have anything in this, in this class. I steal them and I'll put them over here. Yeah, oh. All right. yeah um, gosh, uh, I should make the old. Am I talking too much? But, uh, it's a common problem. I don't know. I mean, I should just say, like, randomly selected student, tell us why this mod works out the uh, same. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Uh, I think it's pedagogical. That's a little worse than you can do. <laughs> Like, that kid isn't here tomorrow. <laughs> Strange. They've dropped out of yeah. school. Yeah. Um, I might want to talk to you about, so I'm looking at the limitation of the Thanks for calling in. Thank you.